Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of a knife that is very outside of my normal realm, but is very, very neat. Um, and that is this little guy right here. This is the Micho Knives Damascus Heritage Knife. This is something a little bit unusual. It's something a little bit special. It's something a little bit different, and it's something that I'm very happy to take a look at. But um, nevertheless, uh, yeah, so I want to go on ahead and take a look. But first off, before I go any further, I, I, I do want to thank, actually, Polish Custom Knives. Um, they are not the maker themselves, of course, but they are, the I think, the only dealer that works with Micho's stuff. Um, and so they, they are the folks who sent this guy along. Um, as always, I've told them I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. And it might be a gem. It might be junk. They did still send it along. But nonetheless, we do have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever. And I'm doing my best not to let this affect my review. I mean, they, you can read my full disclaimer on the website. And they, you know, they, they, they know the story. But nonetheless, um, that, that's how I got this guy. Next thing, let's do some size comparison. And, uh, you know, for standard sake, here it is against the Spyderco PM2. Here it is against the Ontario Rat Number 2. Yeah, this is not a small knife whatsoever. Here it is against the uh, Spyderco Delica. Yeah, it's a big one. This is a very, very big knife. Uh, and then here it is, is, in terms of fixed blade comparison, here it is against a, a, a very well-loved uh, Mora Knife Companion. So, uh, slightly different classes of pocket knives here. Well, not pocket knife anymore. This is a big-ass freaking fixed blade. So, um, there you go. Next thing, a little bit more about um, Micho. Um, so, this guy is, uh, his nickname is Micho. His uh, real name is, I'm so sorry, I think it's Janusz uh, Kozalubski, something along those lines. I don't speak the Polish, unfortunately. Um, but nonetheless, Less. He's uh, born in, uh, I'm reading his bio from the website, born in 1967. He's been making knives for 25 years. Um, he's from Western Germany, and every one of his knives is different. Um, and that's kind of a cool thing, actually. If you go on the Polish Custom Knives site, like I said, I think they're the only folks selling his stuff at least online. Um, every one of them is kind of a completely different style, and so there you go. And then finally, um, this is going to be a, a quick review focusing on the good stuff and the bad stuff. Um, the reason for that is, is simple. I am generally not a reviewer of art knives, and I'm generally not a fixed blade reviewer. They wanted me to check one of these guys out. I'm really glad I got a chance to, but at the same time, um, this is not something I can go quite as deep in depth of, because the other thing is, I, you know, where am I going to carry this? Am I going to take this to work and use it to cut out foam or bust open an apple in a freaking lunchroom? No, not necessarily. So um, yeah, keep in mind, this is a little different than a lot of my reviews, but I'm still going to talk about what I love about it, what I don't like so much, and then we'll uh, go into the final conclusion. So, um, and then finally, one big important detail. This is a very expensive knife. This is a $1,600 knife, uh, closer to 17 actually. So if you're thinking about this as, oh, this will be a great budget piece, that's not generally the case with hand-forged Damascus. But anyways, so let's go ahead and talk about what I really like about this guy, what I don't like so much, and we'll go there. Um, first thing that I do like is the fact that each one of the pieces is kind of one of a kind, right? Um, there, there were a lot of production knife companies out there, and, you know, that's great. Um, and even within the custom world, uh, where everything is exactly the same, you know, every paramilitary too should be roughly pretty damn similar. Um, then there are the custom makers, but very often custom makers have models where it's like, I'm going to make a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, maybe this one will be a different color. Maybe this one will, but nonetheless, the, the, their stuff tends to be relatively similar at one after another. Um, this maker particularly, at least based on what I'm seeing on the website, uh, is doing something different roughly each time. Yeah, there were some similarities and they, they all tend to be a little bit more in the fantasy of the fight of domain rather than the, this is actually one of his most conservative pieces. Um, but nevertheless, um, they are all different and that's kind of cool, actually. I, I appreciate the fact that he's not just doing the same pattern over and over again. I don't get the impression, well, certainly this isn't water jetted, um, but I don't get the impression that he's just got a bunch of blade blanks and is churning out, you know, the same design with different handle on it. That's kind of a cool thing. Next thing, this does come with a very nice sheath. You can see here the sheath has this nice little bit of engraving here. It's got a nice little space for the belt there. And honestly, the, the knife fits beautifully in there and it fits securely in there. Get this guy in there and it's, it's really not going anywhere. And I did actually throw this guy on my belt. I wasn't, you know, what? Like I said, I'm not freaking on the town or anything like that with this. But at the same time, you know, it absolutely does work. It's a fine sheath and it's easy enough to use. It's easy enough to remove the knife because particularly with this flared bell at the bottom here, very, very easy to go for. And that's a great thing. Next thing, the handle on this guy is freaking beautiful. I will uh, 
go ahead and clean it off a little bit. The handle here is a water buffalo horn. Um, I believe it's a water buffalo. I, yeah, I think water buffalo. Anyways, no matter what kind of buffalo it is, that's what we're looking at here. And this handle actually, you know, on, on the surface, it looks a lot like some kind of a polymer or another. But at the end of the day, uh, it's actually got a little bit more depth to it. It's got a fair amount of luster to it. It's got a, it's actually very attractive. And it's kind of hard to show that off maybe in some lights. I'm going to, just in the name of the science, I'm going to put a different light on this guy. So maybe you can see a little bit more of that luster. Maybe that'll come out a little bit more as it does in the sunlight. Because this is really, there is more, there is something more to this handle than I think meets the initial eye. And so in direct sun, you see some of this grain pattern, whereas most of the time it just feels black. Um, I think it's absolutely freaking beautiful. Um, and it is also, by the way, very ergonomic. Um, I like very much that the, the ergos on this knife. You've got the blade guard up here. You've got this little groove here. Even though this is a very smooth handle, and it is indeed very, very smooth, it is absolutely very nice in the hand. Um, this knife is a pleasure to cut with, and frankly, was a pleasure to shop, and a pleasure all around. So that's a wonderful thing. Next thing, this guy has a uh, beautiful mosaic Damascus throughout. What I'm going to try and do here is just zoom in. So um, hopefully this will let me show a little bit more detail here of what this Damascus looks like, because... It's pretty damn cool. You can see here that actually there there appear to have been at two points in time or at a certain point in time two you know different billets of Damascus or something like that where you've got this central pattern here that kind of loops off to the side here it is roughly matched by the swedge by the way which is neat so you've got that going on but it is a true Damascus it's not just some kind of a, a laser engraving in fact you can see on the pat that the, the the pattern goes on to the spine here and continues to be freaking beautiful. It's got a very nice deep edge to it, and I'll show you the other side here just so you can get a sense of it. Yeah, that's some pretty Damascus. It is a mosaic-style Damascus rather than a more conventional sort of uh, unipattern Damascus, like, for instance, on... Sorry, I should pull this aside here. The um, uh, Old Spectre. This is a... Uh, as well as the Alamic uh, Busca is another knife that has a Damascus-style blade. But you can see here, this is one single pattern. Same thing with the uh, Spectre here, which has just one pattern throughout. This with a mosaic pattern has a variety of different things. And then you get up to the blade guard, and the blade guard is itself a different kind of Damascus. I can't speak to the metallurgy of it being different, but it is a different pattern. It is fundamentally differently done. But again, it has a very nice deep etch, and that deep etch actually ends up giving it a little bit more gription. This is actually a really nice surface to grip in that it is, there's plenty of purchase here, but it's not actually sharp in any way. This thing is absolutely freaking gorgeous. And you can see the Damascus throughout. This really appears to have been, you know, a single billet of, of this Damascus that is forged into the blade guard here. Um, and so I gotta say, that's great. And then on the pommel, and I believe this is a pommel, by the way. I mean, it sure seems like it. Oh, seagulls, thank you very much for chiming in on this review. Anyways, um, you can see here, you've got a beautiful piece of Damascus, again, inlaid right there. That is... That's just nice. And so this is a, a knife that is really, um, you know, there's a reason that this particular knife is called the, uh, what is it, a, a Heritage Dam or Damascus Heritage Knife. It is really putting front and center this beautiful pattern welded steel. And this steel, by the way, is um, by a, the, the, his collaborator, Micho's collaborator, uh, uh, Grigory, uh, Grigory Vrezhnikov, if it's pronounced Russian-like. Um, either way, um, it's freaking gorgeous is what it is. And it is absolutely something, you know, I can just sit there and stare at this with like a jeweler's loop. And I'm, it's cool. Um, and so I love very much that you've got not only this good Damascus on the blade itself and on the, uh, the, 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 the bolster here, but also... Also in the pommel, and oh man, it's just cool. Um, so that's good. Next thing, I gotta say, the fit and finish on this guy is great, and it freaking better be for this kind of a price point. But when we get down in here, and actually, I'll zoom back in so you can see, you can see here that the uh, the joining here is pretty much flawless, um, as well as back here, and then the the connection between the horn and the um the the, the, the Damascus here absolutely good to go. I am just super impressed by the fit and finish. Mind you, it's a fixed blade, so that's easier to do, but at the same time, poof, this thing looks really good. And then finally, on the good side, um, this actually is a very nice tool. Um, this guy, uh, I, I, I actually, crazily enough, I did cut tests. Crazily enough, I wanted to see, because it's a beautiful freaking knife, but is it a knife still? 
Because there are 100% out there art knives that are just not knives, right? And that's one of the main differences between if you go to a flea market, for instance, and pick up some Damascus, uh, which is very often going to be a pattern welded steel, but they're both mild steels, right? Um, and so you end up with very poor cutting performance. You end up, and you know, similarly, you might get a very bad grind. You might, but no, the thing is, this is actually a hollow grind on this guy. This actually comes to a relatively thin edge. This blade, in addition to being a very nice blade for looking at, is actually a good blade for cutting as well. Also, the balance on this is perfect. It is a really excellent balance. This knife actually, again, it's very nice in the hand. It's very ergonomic. It holds a nice edge. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But at the same time, this is a knife that is actually a good cutting tool. It also happens to be just freaking gorgeous. And so I am very, very much happy about that because it is it is an art knife, but it's still a knife. And I feel like for whatever reason and whatever artistic conceit I have in the matter, I need even a a fancy knife to still be a good knife. And so that's that's important to me. So to me, all of that is the good, is that it's a very nice tool. It's got great fit and finish with a beautiful Damascus blade as well as bolster, as well as pommel, with a uh, beautiful handle that is way more complex than it initially seems in terms of the light. Um, it comes with a very nice sheath, and each piece is one of a kind, so it's not the case that you're just going to be getting, you know, the 15th of these guys that he's made this month. Um, there are some downsides, though. I mean, the, the, the sheath, for instance, I, is a little tight on the belt. You can see here there's one leather uh, sort of uh, thing here. I was able to get it onto my belt. And by the way, we're talking a relatively standard here. Uh, here we go. I'll show you. You know, we're talking a relatively standard belt here. It's not the thickest thing ever, but it, it fought me a little bit getting that guy on there. Um, next thing, there is a little bit of what actually uh, looks a little bit like a glue or something, maybe an epoxy, um, right around the edge of the pommel. This could actually be polish that's built up in there, and you know what? It is what it is. It's You can't really see it unless you're looking at that very closely, but it's definitely an area where maybe it's a little bit of glue spillover if the pommel is glued on rather than, I don't get a sense that they could have done that integrally, so to speak. But either way, um, that, that that's something they could have controlled a little bit more. Um, the, the most substantial issue that I had with this guy was actually um, out of the box, uh, this guy, well, out of the pouch, I suppose. Um, this guy, I, I did some cutting with it. I, I took it to some cardboard, I took it to some paper, and I noticed that I was getting a little bit of chipping on the edge. Not much, just little micro chips, but enough that it, it was noticeable to me, because that's something I want to check. And so I talked to the folks, uh, the, the, the Polish Custom Knives, they talked to Micho, they said, oh, okay, um, it could be that the edge was just a little bit overheated there. Um, and I didn't, by the way, notice any discoloration, or anything like that. They recommended, hey, just go ahead and give it a re shop and see if the issue goes away. And indeed, it did. This is something that's actually not uncommon. In fact, a lot of people argue, th th there was a whole class of people who will say, you know, reshop in your factory knives the moment you get them from the factory. That way you get, it, I'm not saying it's acceptable. I'm not saying it's a good thing. But what I'm saying is the moment I reshop in this guy, that disappeared entirely. Um, I, I took this guy, and so by the way, this is an aftermarket edge, although the original edge wasn't far off. Um, this is maybe a little more mirrory than the factory, but um, either way, so I put a very nice hand convex edge on there with some uh, good old-fashioned stones, and you know what? It works great. Um, but it did have that burned edge there initially, and that could be a problem, especially for somebody who's going to shop it, although who's really going to be out in the woods batoning with this, I ask? Um, well, yeah. Then finally, on the bad side, it's expensive. Um, it is $1,600.66, uh, and that's an odd number to choose. But uh, look, Micho has a bunch of different options. If you look at their website, he's got a bunch of these guys out there ranging. This is on the conservative end. Again, this is $1,600. I'm seeing things from like $1,500 all the way up to $3,000. Um, so this is actually a budget piece. It happened to be the one I find most attractive, too, but still, um, it is definitely a, uh, a lower uh, lower cost piece, but it is expensive. Mind you, it's handmade. It's uh, Damascus that's actually uh, well, really freaking attractive. It's And it's, it's remarkably well done, but it is going to be incredibly pricey and is going to be completely out of the price range for 99.999% of the world, unless you are a particular fan of art knives or forged Damascus. Um, so that that to me is the bad, is that it is very expensive, coming in around $1,666. Uh, it has got a burned edge, uh, but that went away very quickly with an initial sharpening. Um, it looks like there was a little bit of glue left over around the pommel here, and the sheath is a little bit tight on the belt, although at the end of the day, that didn't end up really hurting me too bad. 
had to find something, right? Um, final conclusion, this is kind of a hard review to do at some level because it is completely outside my normal zone. Um, you know, not only is it a fixed blade, and I'm not generally a fixed blade reviewer, although I'm definitely spending a little bit more time there, um, but it is uh, an art knife, you know, through and through. This is not really my general forte. I usually end up looking at knives that are at the very least more pretending to have them be tools, he says, owning this. But nonetheless, I digress. That's, a, by the way, a Holt Spectre uh, right here in a damascus steel blade, and this guy that I showed off earlier is an Alamic Busker with a uh, another damascus steel blade. But really, uh, in terms of a final conclusion, look, nobody is sitting out there wondering, you know, oh, hey, Nick, should I go with the Micho Damascus Heritage Knife or the Mora Companion for my upcoming camping trip? No, that's that, that's not a question. You're, you're thinking about it entirely wrong or entirely right, depending how you want to think about it. So it's not necessarily my normal world, but the thing is, I can absolutely appreciate it because it is beautifully done. It has an absolutely beautiful sheath a beautiful handle, this absolutely wonderful Damascus steel freaking everywhere, um, and a design that actually makes it not a bad tool. This is a solid knife for actually using as a knife, um, but and I, I even used it in the kitchen, right? Um, I have to, I, uh, but anyways... Um, and that, that's, of course, pretending for a minute that anybody's going to use it as a knife because it is art at the end of the day. Um, it still does that. And that's something I appreciate, even if that's just because I'm weird. Mind you, it's not the perfect sheath for daily wear. But again, really, um, there was a little glue around the pommel out there and uh, the, the edge was a little burned from the maker, which is not good, by the way. And it is fundamentally a lot of damn money. However, at the end of the day, this is an art knife. I mean, it is 100% a knife that is designed to look beautiful above all else. The fact that it happens to cut things nicely and is great in the hand, in some ways it's probably almost irrelevant. This is a knife that is a beautiful object. Pardon me, first and foremost... This is a knife that is made of beautiful materials. The point of this knife is not that it cuts. The point of this knife is not how it carries or how it sits in the hand during cutting. Um, the fact that they did that at all is sort of a, frankly, I think it's a, a, a it's something that the maker should be proud of, but it is nonetheless not uh, designed for a daily functional tool. Um, and it is done exceptionally, exceptionally well. Um, I am very, very impressed with this knife, and I find it to be just one of the more beautiful objects I've had on the channel. Of course, your tastes are going to vary. Some people are already calling me a bourgeois bastard down in the comment. That's completely fine. But it is 100% an art knife. And the thing is, when I, you know, final recommendation, it's hard to recommend art, right? Especially, and it's even more so when the pieces are one of a kind. Like, should you buy this knife? Well, you, it's a great knife, but you can't, so there you go, right? Um, and it's even more so when the, the, the pieces, like I said. I, I can absolutely tell you, though, that this is an absolutely beautiful piece. It is a joy to admire and appreciate. I am literally not kidding you when I talk about the fact that I have actually spent time with a freaking jeweler's loop just staring at the Damascus. I lead a very boring life, and so that sounds like a wonderful way to spend a Friday night to me, but the that's definitely a thing. Every time I look at this knife, it does make me smile. It makes me go, whoa, that's freaking attractive. And it impresses me in that way. And so I think that's the way you can appreciate art. It's just like, damn. <laughs> nice. And to me, at least, that's definitely the effect it has. Whether you're looking to spend $1,500, $3,000 bucks on a fixed blade... It's a whole other question for you. But anyways, there you go. So really, well done, Micho. Keep an eye on the edges, though. But nonetheless, I'm very, very impressed. And uh, if you're looking for something that's really freaking neat looking, um, you may well consider giving them, a, uh, giving them a look. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you. And have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.